Hey guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I've got a really cool kind of like grungy, melting RGB liquidy kind of effects for you. It's just a really cool effect and it's really simple to do. And you can also mess around with this as much as you want to create some really, really different kind of variations of it. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that in today's video. But as always guys, if you do learn anything new in today's video and you do want to learn more about graphic design and Photoshop and all that kind of stuff, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos videos like this one every single week. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. So, as always guys, you know this by now, first step, you want to open up Photoshop. You can open up any size document you want, this effect doesn't matter what size you do it on. I'm doing it on a thumbnail size for this video if you want to copy exactly as I'm doing it, which is 1280 by 720 pixels. And once you're in here, all we're going to do is just fill our background with black, and how I did that was hitting control backspace, which fills in the layer with your background color. It also works with selections. If you want to fill a whole selection that you've made, all you have to do is hit Alt Backspace or Control Backspace. And Alt does your foreground color, which is this color in the front box here. And Black does your background color, which is the background color there. So that's a little shortcut for you guys. But you just want to make a black background or any color background that you wish, but I think it kind of works well with black. And then you're just going to get your text tool and just type whatever you want to type. I'm just going to type the actual word text for this tutorial. And you just want to put it in the middle there and get a nice font that you'd like. A nice kind of bold sans serif font works really nicely in this effect. However, play around with fonts and you might come up with some different ideas. So once we've done that, what we're going to want to do is make a new layer. Make sure your text is white. And now we want to change our brush. So if you come up to, if you press B on your keyboard to get the brush tool come up to the top left where this little brush drop down menu is and even click on the little folder thing to bring up the brush menu what we want to do is make sure your spacing is on one percent your hardness of your brush is on a hundred percent your size doesn't really matter too much but what you want to do is it should be this way by default you just want to make sure this circle here is fully like pulled out so it's not stretched in like that because that just gives you a different shape Whereas if you do circle, you see it's nice and round like that. So we want this nice kind of round shape for our liquid effect. And then what we're going to do is just make a new layer by clicking on this button down here at the bottom of our screen on the bottom right. Or hitting Control, Shift and N to make a new layer and just hit Enter. What you're going to do, you want your brush to not be too big. Like when you drag it up, you don't want it to be like the whole size of the E. I'm going to make mine at around 30 pixels, something actually a bit less. Maybe like half of that, 16. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna make this kind of weird, if that even makes any sense, like this kind of liquid flow coming into the top of our E. So maybe it's better to actually do it kind of flowing downwards to get that more liquid like motion to it. You don't want it to be too wavy, yet you don't want it to be dead straight either. You kind of just want, you kind of just do like a freehand line down, you'll end up naturally making the right shape. So what we're gonna do here is just fill this in with white and at the bottom, you just want to kind of brush it and make it look like it's kind of flowing into this E shape a little bit, which you're going to change later anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. And it doesn't matter if you're overlapping the E slightly, like that's what the actual layer itself looks like. But yeah, something like this roughly will be fine for what we need to do. Then what you're going to want to do is come over to your foreground color, just click it once. It'll bring up the color picker. We're going to pick a nice yellow color. So we're just going to get a nice yellow brush. And all we're going to do is get a decent size, like maybe like a quarter of the size of the actual um, thing itself. So this is probably about a quarter. And you're just going to do a similar shaped line just going down it. It doesn't matter if it's too neat. It doesn't matter if it gets thicker in some parts or thinner. Nice yellow line. Then we're going to come and do a more kind of green color, but we're going to make it not fully saturated. We're just going to have it like this. We're going to do a nice green color down here. Now you have to use these colors because you'll see later on in the video why this is going to help create our RGB effect. And then we're going to do like a, a blue color. And they don't have to be specific hex codes. It can literally just be a yellow, green, blue that looks like that. And then we're going to do on the same layer is just do the same thing from the bottom. But with this effect, I kind of like to make the bottom one look a little bit more kind of like flowy, like give it a little bit more movement. I'm going to make it slightly more curved than I did with the one melting off the top of our E. In fact, I'm going to do some more. I'm going to make this our colors all a bit wider at the top. There we go, something like that. So this is where you should be now roughly something like this. Then what you wanna do is come down to the adjustment layers, this little kind of like Pepsi icon looking button at the bottom. Then you want to go to hue and saturation. You wanna put the hue to plus 10 and you wanna put the saturation all the way up. Then what you wanna do is make another new layer, just a new blank layer on your brush tool. If you press shift and B to cycle through your brushes or 
you come over and hold left click on the actual brush icon. You want to come down and select the mixer brush tool, which is the brush with this little drop looking thing. Now you've got to make sure the settings are all the same as these, which I'm going to run you through really quick. You're going to have our hardness on 0% and our brush just any size for now. And make sure you've got this icon here selected. You want to come into your brush settings and you want to make sure you turn off spacing. So you just turn it off by ticking the box. You want wet to be on 100%, load to be on 100%, mix to be on 0% and flow to be on 100%. And if there's an angle in here, just change that to zero. But the most important setting that you need on for this effect to work is the sample all layers button. So what this is going to do is you're going to use a mixer brush. And it's effectively going to mix all your layers together. But it's going to include the hue and saturation layer. And it's just going to manipulate our colors and give us this RGB effect. So look, I'm going to show you guys. And this is where the effect actually comes in. So once you've got all those settings correct, what you want to do is this new layer, you want to drag it underneath the hue and saturation layer. And all you've got to do is just brush onto your actual text. And as you can see, it creates this nice kind of RGB rainbow kind of melting effect. But if you brush like over the text, it kind of, you can drag the actual white of the text up. So I like to do it kind of at the edges so it looks like it's kind of flowing into it a little bit, something like that. And smaller brushes you get more, the more kind of like subtle effects you get. And yeah, you can really just mess about with how you want this to all kind of blend in with each other and all kind of stuff like this. You can even just make new layers and layer them on top of each other so that if, you, if, you, if you're happy with how this looks but you wanna keep experimenting, you can just make a new layer and literally just keep using this mixer brush making new effects and if you figure out that you don't actually like some of the effects you've made all you have to do is delete the layers and make a new one and then you can come and do it again so i'm going to try and make something that i'm happy with here and i want this bottom bit to mainly like it's melting but i don't want the whole shape of the e to actually get lost so i'm just going to do something like this at the bottom where it drags a few things up like so i'm just going to take a bigger brush size and just brush it kind of straight upwards till we get this kind of effect that we like. And you can create these kind of little bubbles as well if you just move the mouse ever so slightly and then start dragging it. And you can really create whatever kind of effect you want. If you want to change the colors, just literally swirl the mouse around. It's kind of swirling and melting pattern. But I like, I like the kind of look where it's getting sort of dragged. I think that looks really, really cool. But then what you can really do to add to this effect so I'm going to do it in a new layer because sometimes it doesn't always look brilliant. If you come over to the edges of some of the text, and you drag them out slightly. It gives them these kind of like glitchy RGB kind of little things around the edge. It can really help like give it a kind of glitchy look if that's what you're going for. If you're going for like a kind of grungy tech kind of effect sort of thing. You can also have, make it more so that the RGB is like leaking into the text a little bit. And the good thing about them being on all separate layers is you can actually just edit these. You can just erase parts if you don't like certain bits but you want some sort of effects going on. And just erase the parts that you don't like like I'm doing here. And then keep the ones that you do. So, But what I'm now going to do is show you some kind of ways you can even take this further and play around with your typography and create some really cool stuff so what you could do is i'm going to create i'm going to duplicate our text layer which i did by hitting Control j that just duplicates any layers that you've got selected in your layers panel and then i'm going to right click and do rasterize type which is basically going to allow us to put these filters and effects and you can do it as a smart object as well um, I just prefer to rasterize it and do it. I don't know why, I just prefer doing that. It takes up less of your layers panel. What you're gonna do is come over to filter and come down to where it says liquefier. Then what you wanna do is on this kind of twist tool, you can mess around with the settings up here. However, I normally have pressure on 100 and a pretty large size, like just a bit larger than what I'm trying to transform. And yeah, these are my liquefier settings. All these ones in the drop down menu are just default. And you can literally just go through here, turn your brush size up if you want more kind of a warped effect. And you can really just play around and get some kind of grungy effects. Now if we turn this off, move this up a little bit, you can create some really cool kind of like grunge effects looking like this. Then once again, just erase any parts from other layers that don't really merge with it. You can even move things around if you just press L and get the lasso tool and just do layer by cut and move where it actually is. You can create some stuff like that. So there's another way you can mess around with it, like liquefying the actual text as well as doing this kind of melting effect. However, another thing we can do with the text is if we make our text black and give that a sort of stroked outline with white, but then we delete some of our other layers so maybe your E is just black with that white outline. Again it just creates this really cool melting effect. You can even create like this sort of effect which all I've done is just drag the text out a bit to the right on a new layer of the mixer brush tool and the brush really does it all for you so that is pretty much the effect itself and now I'm going to show you a couple things you can do just to add some kind of grunginess to this effect. What you want to do is open up Google and you just want to search grunge texture or grunge textures and then the trick to do when you're searching for assets on Google is if you click on this tools button do size and 
and large, all it's going to do is give you really high quality results. So you can find any kind of grunge texture that you want. I even like this first one that it's given me. So what you want to do is just copy that image. Hit Control V once you're in Photoshop and resize it so that it actually fits your canvas. And then if you don't like the kind of background, you can turn the opacity down of this effect or even change the blend mode of it, which won't do much on a black background. So changing the opacity is probably going to be a better option here. And you can even get some like grunge like some grunge kind of film overlays that's what i'm going to kind of look for kind of like this this is just an image that i've grabbed off of google and i just put the screen thing on it this is probably what it looks like when you actually see it on google that's what the texture looks like itself you can really just mess around and see what kind of things you can come up with and like just really make these kind of cool grungy liquid rgb kind of like melting effect like even just creating some distorted text and stuff and putting it and overlaying it with less opacity even just doing that creates this really cool kind of grunge effect and ties it all together really nicely. But yeah, that was pretty much it, this effect. That was it for today's tutorial, guys. However, this is such a cool effect and learning how to use the mixer brush tool and those liquify effects within Photoshop just open up a whole new possibility to create these kind of grunge textures, effects, typography, whatever you want to do with them. I strongly suggest you open up Photoshop and give this a try after you've watched this video or do it as I'm going along with you. This is just another opportunity for you guys to go and explore and hopefully give you some ideas. So as always, if you have learned anything new within today's video and you do want to learn more about graphic design, Photoshop and all that kind of stuff, Please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos like this one every single week. But yeah, other than that guys, I'll see you in the next video.